a great question came through on a video I did a few weeks ago about deload weeks, recovery weeks, being able to, uh, I guess, adapt, recover from a training block and then springboard into the next one, super compensation, the works. Thought I'd go through today a little bit on a concept called functional overreaching, but then also how the shift in training cycles can work depending on your different situations. So do you use uh, two weeks up and then a one week deload or do you use three weeks up? one week deload in the typical four week cycle do you go longer than that when do training camps fit into it a little bit more about how you can manipulate where that deload and recovery happens to get the most out of your performance because i understand particularly at the moment it's going to be quite varied so let's get stuck into functional overreaching what's happening with deload and recovery in a number of different circumstances and hopefully we can answer the question hey guys nick here welcome back to the channel talking science of endurance and everything sports science in general Make sure if you haven't already or if you're new to the channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing down below to continue to help grow this channel uh, and reach more people to help educate and, and have some really good quality discussions around sports science and sports performance. Make sure if you haven't, I'm gonna link it above and maybe in the description down as well. Last video I did was the 50th video up on the channel. So I did a bit of a rundown of who I am. I know it's sort of taken a bit to, to get to 50 videos and to a point where I'm gonna talk about uh, who I am, my background, things like that. But I think it was a good time to, to sort of bring that in. As the channel's growing, plenty of new people watching the content Content, uh, video after video, new subscribers, I thought I'd start to, to get out a little bit more about who I am. So make sure you go check that uh, down below in the description uh, or if you hit the card before, go watch that one if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about me and the journey to becoming a sports scientist overall and, and how I got to where I am today. Like I said in the intro, today's video is all about uh, the, the concept of functional overreaching as a starting point and I want to talk about that first, but then also the shift of deload week depending on what's happening in your training and the strategic shift should I say of the deload weekend and planning your recovery strategically throughout the training cycle so first of all this stems from a question that I had uh, in the comments off my deload video which again I'll link above and, and down below um, in terms of where does recovery fit in in terms of our training cycle how does that then allow us to adapt and improve and, and rebound into the next block uh, super compensation go back above and beyond where our baseline fitness was to improve how does that recovery block fit in and i used a very simple structure of three weeks building and one week deload which is very very common i mean that's i guess the classic cycle for what most athletes are going to use it's one that we talk about a lot it's for majority of athletes quite manageable you have a, a three weeks where they get progressively harder each week and then you have one week where you deload you have your recovery your spring springboard you can you can call it deload you can call it reload for the next cycle you can call it adaptation week you can recovery week whatever you want to call it. it's all the same thing but a four-week block is is pretty common three weeks up one week down repeat that where we can start to go away from that is some athletes may not fit that mold purely from the fact of things like age um, training history injury history a number of these factors can lead into why someone may not be able to do three consecutive weeks building you might have to do two weeks building i know for a lot of older athletes and when i say older i'm talking um, athletes who are racing like late into their their sort of late 50s 60s and 70s i've worked with before uh, in terms of amateur categories masters racing may find that two weeks building and one week deload is a lot less stress on their body particularly the runners and triathletes when we've got that impact stress on things like knees hips um, Achilles, calves, all the damage that can be done from the impact is typically one, but then also just from general fatigue. The older you get, the harder it is to recover. That, that's just the decline that we go through. We're all gonna hit that at some point. It's just a case of let's try and capitalize on the fact that we can get really two aggressive training blocks in, uh, training weeks in, and then we can have that deload or recovery week to, to rebound out of it. And that might be a better cycle for you. On the flip side, I've seen athletes go out to sort of five weeks before and, and push out four blocks and i was having a conversation with an athlete who sent me through their program leading into a half marathon they're going to do virtually uh, at home um, in the next little while and they they want to push through and go well i'm kind of going to end up with awkward timing for when i want to do my half marathon if i do a, a three three building weeks a deload week and then i kind of have to taper after that i'm going to have three deload weeks like what what's going on there am i going to be almost detrained by the end and and not ready for race day as best I could. And so I basically said to him, I was like, well, there's a couple of ways we could go about it. You could go about it that way and go, well, for uh, the, the typical four week cycle, have your deload week, have a week back up and then do a one week taper and see how you go if you're a quick recoverer. He sort of said, well, not really. I probably need that extra extra time to recover and a little bit longer taper is something I wanna, wanna try in this prep. So said, okay, let's go for four weeks hard. So build, 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 build. You're gonna be bloody fatigued, but then what that allows us is it's just, two weeks of the taper so we can have a full 14 days to recover which should be enough and what i'm describing there in terms of the the, the deliberate extra training to then go into recovery is the principle of functional overreaching and what we're talking about with functional overreaching is the deliberate onset of more training load than we were normally accustomed to and this is very very typical of what a lot of athletes would expect from something like a training camp really intense set of training for 
way uh, above and beyond what their normal acute training load would be for a particular week or for a particular two weeks or for a weekend, whatever, whatever it is, followed by a deliberate block of exaggerated recovery, if you want to term it that way. So what, what it allows is we push our body right up until it's like almost breaking point. We're doing a lot of training, a big training load, and then we have a really aggressive recovery provides the same effect as the other two methods I described. It's just a different way of doing it. Now, this isn't sustainable all the time. This is something that it's, in, if you're in this athlete example that I've talked through before, we're implementing at the back end of their training program. So he's already built up a hell of a lot of chronic training volume and training, training load prior to this. So he's able to get through that. But also we're being very, very strict on what his recovery is like in that immediate week uh, after the, the last hard week, if you like, the first week of the taper to then prepare best for the, best for the half marathon um, to, to get the most out of that functional overreaching. Because it's the same thing, like if you've ever experienced a training camp before and a lot of athletes have, they go in, they train really hard, have a really aggressive week or, or weekend and come out of it, they're like really psyched about training, they're probably a bit fatigued and then they just get back into their normal routine and they go back into a normal training week and never really recover from it and never really gain any performance advantage from it. Why? Because you never had the adequate recovery to balance out the fatigue. And that's all I guess I'm getting at from this video and to lead off that, that previous video on deload is you just need enough recovery to balance balance out and allow adaptation above and beyond where you went from, from the fatiguing aspect, which is your training. Um, if, if you need in, in a race preparation, if you need two full weeks of taper to get into that race and feel like you're ready to go, great. I know athletes who need a week of taper and then they need a week of sort of moderate training, training volume in the week of the race because that's when they start to feel things click and start to see that performance benefit, um, uh, I guess, kick into gear, if you like, is after they've started training in. So they, they have a, a one week really heavy taper. They don't do a lot at all. They, they're, they're really low volume, keeping some intensity in, freshen up completely. That next week, it takes them a few sessions to get back into it. So they have some full sessions in the early in the week, tail off a little bit towards back end, then race. And on race day, they're well above where they were before and they've sort of bounced out of it completely. Some athletes like to have taper right through to the end and don't like to do too much training in the last two weeks. Some athletes like to have a one week taper. There's no right or wrong. It's just as long as you can understand how much recovery your body needs to be able to get to that elevated performance state and allow that super compensation to happen and where you're gonna put it in relation to making sure those timelines match so you're ready to perform when you have to perform. So I guess as an overall summary, I'm gonna keep this one short today and try to get, and try to I guess summarize as best they can some of these concepts. Functional overreaching is a deliberate increase in training volume to allow you to push yourself as basically to that breaking point for the p purpose of having a super compensation effect and having a boost in performance above and beyond what you would normally expect from a normal routine training cycle. But it only happens when we have the adequate recovery to balance that and to match it and to allow us to adapt. If you don't have the adequate recovery, we then start getting into stages of things like overtraining burnout, um, where, where your body just goes, I've just had enough. If I keep training, I'm just gonna get more and more fatigued. And more and more fatigue leads to nothing but worse performance, essentially. You go into anything fatigued, you're gonna underperform. It's as simple as that. You go into something well recovered, you're gonna perform. Pretty sort of simple, straightforward. So hopefully that answers the questions around well, what structure should I use? Really, it's individual to you. What do you think works best in terms of uh, where you are? But also have a look at how many weeks you've got. If you've got an awkward number of weeks, if you've got 13 weeks uh, till your event, well, maybe a three blocks of four isn't gonna work. You've still got a spare week at the end. You might It might work for you. If you've got 14 weeks, you've got two spare weeks at the end. It might be awkward. Maybe have two blocks of four, uh, a block of five to then lead into those two taper weeks at the end. There's no right or wrong, but like I said, balance recover, balance your fatigue with the amount of recovery you're getting. You're gonna go right 99% of the time. Hopefully, uh, again, you got something out of this video today. Let me know down in the comments what method you prefer to use in terms of number of weeks building versus deload and recovery. Do you use some functional over overreaching methods in your training? Do you enjoy going to training camps and, and how do you work that in? Leave it in the comments down below. As always, make sure if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button to help grow the channel. Big thumbs up on the video if you've enjoyed today and we'll see you in the next one.